Now that our starter is ready, we can finally mix our dough. Bulk fermentation begins right when mixing ends and lasts until the dough is divided in shape. Remember, this is when your microorganisms begin the work of digesting the sugars in flour and producing alcohol and CO2 to create airy, flavorful bread. Meanwhile, you'll do your part by strengthening the gluten network in your dough through a series of folds. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to mix your dough, as well as different methods of folding and when to use them. I like to start mixing my dough uh, with water, and then I'll add my starter to it. I like to do it this way because it also, you can kind of do the float test while you're doing it. So if your starter floats, like look at this little little guy, he's floating. Um, that means your starter's um, good and it's ready because it's built a lot of CO2. Okay. Now I do my flour. Um, I do it this way because then I can make sure that the flour is really hydrated. and it's just easier to make sure that the flour is hydrated this way versus if you're pouring your water into your big batch of flour. And I always like to mix my doughs by hand and this is such a small amount of dough that you can really do that. So if you're familiar with baking, you can kind of recognize like adding your flour little bits, of, little bits of a time so it doesn't clump and you can get your um, dough really consistent in texture. And you see, it's a lot easier to mix when you do it this way. So this process is really easy, but what you wanna make sure is that you do get all your flour hydrated because it can get really hard to get dry clumps of flour incorporated in your dough if you don't get it all hydrated at this point. So when we get to this point, I like to switch to my hands. At first, I think beginners are a little hesitant to use their hands because um, when you're a beginner, every dough kind of feels really sticky, but I think it's the best way to really learn about dough feel, like how your dough is supposed to feel at every step of the process. And you can get your ingredients really well incorporated. So you don't really want to knead your dough too much at this point. You just want to make sure that, like I said, all the flour is really incorporated in there and you don't have any dry bits. Now I add the salt. Okay, so we're kind of getting there. So a dough scraper like this is really handy um, for getting all the dough out of your hand, the sticky dough out of your hands, and then scraping the sides of the bowl to make sure you get everything in there. So I think we're good here. So at this point, I think we're done mixing. Um, our dough is still a little bit sticky. You can kind of feel that all of the flour, there's no more dry bits of flour. And also watch out for those grains of salt. Once you feel that all of that is incorporated, then you're pretty much done with mixing. Um, at this point, your dough is not gonna be super smooth. Um, as you can see here, it's really sticky um, and there's not really a lot of strength to it. So, but that's what we'll build during the entire four hour process of making your sourdough bread. Right now, we're gonna leave this to rest for about 30 minutes, and that'll just let the flour hydrate, and you'll see a huge difference just between right after mixing and after your rest period. So at this point, I like to transfer my dough into um, a clean bowl, just so that you don't get all these dry bits of dough incorporated into your uh, final dough at the end because that they it might not be like hydrated at the same rate and you really don't want that dry patches of flour in your dough there you go so we'll cover this and let it rest at room temperature for about 30 minutes this is just to make sure that your dough doesn't dry out you don't want your dough to dry out at all during this process um, and we'll let this rest for 30 minutes
Okay, let's begin with a few different ways we can develop the strength of our dough. So why fold instead of knead? First of all, sourdough bread dough is usually very sticky and nearly impossible to knead. Also, folding helps align the gluten strands into an even organized structure, which gives the dough the integrity it needs to expand during fermentation. The two folds we'll be using today are stretch and fold and coil folds. Let's begin with a stretch and fold, which is exactly how it sounds. You just stretch the dough out and fold it over itself. Our dough has been resting for about 30 minutes now and it's time to complete our first stretch and fold. So when I do my stretch and fold, I like to have um, a little container of water right beside me because it just helps your um, hand, the dough not stick to your hands. So it's really, really easy. It's pretty self-explanatory. Grab the portion of dough away, that's away from you and stretch it as far as it will go without it tearing and then fold it over itself. And then you flip your bowl 90 degrees and do it again until all sides are folded. So I'm lifting another side of my dough, stretching it out as far as the dough will go and then folding it over itself. So you'll kind of notice that our dough looks just a little bit smoother at this point and it's not super sticky like when we first started. And that's because we let the dough rest and it's now more hydrated um, than it was before. There you go. Last one. Stretch and fold. So by the third or fourth fold, you'll kind of notice that your dough is feeling a little bit tighter. Um, and that's because the gluten is just kind of tightening up and that's why we let it rest so that the gluten can actually expand and stretch out. And now we'll cover this with plastic wrap once more and let it rest for another 30 minutes. Okay, now we're ready for our first coil fold. Coil folding is a really gentle way of folding which relies on surface tension and gravity. Coil folds also help to ensure an even fermentation rate and a uniform crumb structure. Okay, so now let's demonstrate a coil fold. Get your water. I really love using this little bit of water because especially for um, bakers who aren't used to handling dough, it makes the process a lot less sticky. So what you need to do here is just lift the center of the dough until the ends release from the bowl. Okay. So as you can see, instead of pulling up like we did with the stretch and fold, the dough is kind of doing the work for you as it kind of drapes down. And then all you need to do here is tuck the ends under. And usually I like to do that twice during one, um, one set. I'll do this at least two times if my dough will let me. So my dough is kind of like tight right now. Um, and that's pretty normal at this point. And the, um, the point of letting your dough rest and folding it is to develop more of that extensibility and stretch. So now let's just gather our dough up. And as you can see, it's kind of formed a little bit of a coil. And that's how you do a coil fold. So that was our first coil fold and we'll do about two to three more of these depending on how dough is developing. Right now, I'm just gonna cover it with plastic wrap and let it rest for another 30 minutes. So now we're on our second coil fold. Um, always start with wet hands. Um, as you can see, the dough is a lot smoother now. You, can, you might be able to even feel the consistency is a little bit more stretchy and slack. So we're lifting it out of the bowl. Again, we're letting the gravity do most of the work um, of stretching itself. And we just tuck these ends under and we've completed the coil fold. And the goal here is to get progressively um, smoother and a little bit less sticky as you go. This time I, I only did one coil fold because as you, you could see, my, my dough wasn't as stretchy as before and you don't wanna force your dough to do another fold if it doesn't need to um, because um, you really wanna be gentle and you don't want your dough to rip. So now we'll cover this with plastic wrap once more 
and we'll let it rest for another 30 minutes. So now we're on our third coil fold and same exact process as we've done before. All we're doing here is letting the dough release from the bowl and kind of go down and then you coil it. A good way to test out whether you've built enough gluten structure in your dough is by performing the window pane test. And all you have to do to do that is stretch out the dough with your damp fingertips and spread it out. And if you can get it to be translucent and you can see your, the silhouette of your fingertips through, that usually means that you've built up enough gluten structure in your dough and you can stop um, folding now. So if your dough doesn't pass the window pane test at this point, you might have to complete another set of coil folds um, and you just kind of keep testing your dough until it gets to that point. But remember, you have to be very, very gentle um, and um, when you lift that dough, because you, if you handle it too much or handle it too roughly, it might rip that way and you might have already developed enough dough strength. So that's our last coil fold. Now we're gonna cover this with plastic wrap and let it rest for an hour and just um, let it ferment.